What's up, Believe Nation? It's Evan. My one word is believe, and I believe in you. I believe in your potential, and I want to see it be unleashed into the world to create something special for you, your family, and the world. And so to help you on your journey, I started the Mentor Me series to try to learn from people who've done a lot more than us, who've reached for the stars, and if we can learn about their mindset, their mentality, how they approach life, hopefully some of that seeps into us to help us become the best version of ourselves. So today we're gonna learn from Mel Robbins and some of her best motivation. Mentor me, Mel. And as always guys, as you're watching, if you hear something that really resonates with you, please leave it down in the comments below and put it in quotes so other people can be inspired. And when you write it down, it's much more likely to stick with yourself as well. Enjoy. There are so many people in the world and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now and you have these incredible ideas and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true because the way that our minds are wired and the fact about human beings is that we are not designed to do things that are uncomfortable or scary or difficult. Our brains are designed to protect us from those things because our brains are trying to keep us alive. And in order to change, in order to build a business, in order to be the best parent, the best spouse, to do all those things that you know you want to do with your life, with your work, with your dreams, you're going to have to do things that are difficult, uncertain, or scary, which sets up this problem for all of us. You're never going to feel like it. Motivation's garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy. We all have a habit of hesitating. We have an idea, you're sitting in a meeting, you have this incredible idea, and instead of just, you know, saying it, you stop and you hesitate. You can truly trace every single problem or complaint in your life to silence and hesitation. Those are decisions. And what I do and what's changed my life is waking up and realizing that motivation's garbage. I'm never gonna feel like doing the things that are tough or difficult or uncertain or scary or new. So I need to stop waiting until I feel like it. And number two, I am one decision away from a totally different marriage, a totally different life, a totally different job, a totally different income, a totally different relationship with my kids. Your life comes down to your decisions, and if you change your decisions, you will change everything. I'm the kind of person that believes you should always make decisions with your heart and soul. You can use your brain for math, you can use your brain to look at the uh, fine print in a contract, but when it comes to the actual feel of the decision, you always wanna go inward and check it against your heart and soul. How do you do that? Here's the simple test. Does the decision that you're about to make expand you, expand your future, or expand the possibilities of your life? If the answer is yes, then the decision is yes, no matter how terrifying it is. If you conversely look at the choice that you have to make and the decision will shrink you, will silence you, will inhibit you in some way, then the answer is no. No matter how easy the decision is, no matter how safe the decision is, the answer is no. Now, one of the things I wanna point out that when you start to use this, does it expand or does it shrink me? Does it open possibilities or does it keep things closed? Does it raise my voice or does it silence me, right? Is that there's always a short-term and a long-term impact to the decision. The short-term impact to making an expansive decision, a decision that's based in your heart and your soul, Sometimes it's terrifying because sometimes it means moving or it means changing a job or changing a relationship or having a difficult conversation or starting something new. And those sorts of things are always uncomfortable. So brace for impact, put the force fields up, but make the decision anyway. Because the long-term impact of making a decision from your heart and soul, that is where the best life comes from because you're living for what's true for you, not what's safe in the moment. I keep talking about how you can change your life in five seconds, and that's because in five seconds flat, worry can hijack your mind, fear can take over, and the smallest moves that you really wanna make can seem terrifying. 
The opposite is also true. In five seconds flat, you can take control back. Do you know how often you hesitate and stop yourself? All day long. There's actually a neurological reason why change is so hard. Your brain is designed to stop you from changing. Let me explain. You see, change requires you to do things that are uncertain, scary, or new. Your brain is designed to protect you from doing things that are uncertain, scary, or new. What's your brain's favorite way to protect you? To trap you in your head by making you overthink. Now, activation energy is something that was first introduced into the field of human behavior and psychology several decades ago by a rock star professor at the University of Chicago that studied a state of flow. His name was Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, and he studied, was one of the first really, to study human behavior, human performance, and he coined this term activation energy. He actually borrowed it from chemistry, and it's a term that describes this phenomenon. In order to start any kind of chemical reaction, it takes a tremendous amount of energy to create that initial spark. A lot more energy to start it than to keep it going. There's a direct correlation to you and me. Have you ever noticed how hard it is to just get started? How hard it is to get to the gym? How hard it is to get out of bed? how hard it is to put down uh, the bottle when you go to pour a second drink and you know you shouldn't. That feeling, how hard it is to get started, this is what Mihai's talking about. You need activation energy to start the chain, to start to sit down, to start to get out of bed, to start to walk out the door. That's the key to creating any kind of change this activation energy inside of you that causes the initial boom. And then what do we hear over time? Once you start, there's a chain reaction and that allows you to keep going. So what's this have to do with the five second rule? Freaking everything. The five second rule creates activation energy in you. The five second rule is how you activate change inside of you. It is a tool. When you start counting five, four, three, two, one, you awaken your prefrontal cortex. You begin the process of changing. You push yourself in a new direction. That first push, that's gonna be the hardest. Once you get moving, it gets so much easier. If you took money off the table, if you didn't give a shit what anybody else thought, what's the thing you would love to be doing with your life? Seriously. Do you dream of being a professional photographer? Do you want to open your own restaurant? You always thought about traveling the world and entertaining kids with uh, your juggling skills. I don't know, it's your life. You get to choose what you want to do. Be honest with yourself. What is it that you would want to do with your life if you didn't have to pay the bills doing it? Another thing you can ask yourself, who do you find yourself sort of envious of? You know, like you look at their life and you just think, gosh, how awesome that they get to do that. Well, once you have that answer for yourself, you've gotten really honest, you've pushed the bullshit aside and you've really asked it for yourself and answered the question honestly, all you gotta do is explore it, that's it. Just find one thing that you can do to enrich and expand your knowledge about it. Find one course online, Google the topic, stalk people that are pursuing this line of work. That's how you start to do it, one step at a time. So start with answering the question, what do you really want, with a massive dose of honesty. Google the topic and find one thing that you can do, just one, push yourself and start to explore it. If you were to wake up and do that every single day, spend 10 minutes a day, you would be startled, astonished by what your life looks like in a matter of a year or two. And I think everybody has fear all wrong. People have so many theories about fear. They talk about, oh, well, I'm afraid of success. No, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of intimacy. I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of the other thing. There's actually only two fears. Only two. And if you're in sales, which you are, or even if you're not, life is about persuading people. Life is about influencing people. And fear is the invisible force that will make you ineffective at that. It will stop you. 
Now, I love J.K. Rollins as an example. I mean, we all know the Harry Potter series, but what a lot of people don't know about her, she talks a lot about fear. She struggled with major depression. Do you know she was unemployed and she wrote the original idea for Harry Potter on a napkin while she was on state benefits? She was then rejected by 12 publishing houses. And this, by the way, was after she was divorced, bankrupt, and a single mom of a kid. Push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. She talks a lot about fear and about failure. Well, you know, we know the moral of the story. She just kept going. Of course she was afraid. But she had the good kind of fear, not the bad kind of fear. We live in the most amazing moment in time. So that thing that you have up here, whatever it may be, you want to use healthy eating to cure your diabetes, you want to figure out how to take care of uh, the elders and start a new hospice center, you want to move to Africa and build a school, guess what? You could walk into a bookstore right now and buy at least 10 books written by credentialed experts on how the hell you do it. You could Google it and you could probably find at least, I don't know, a thousand blogs documenting the step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step transformation that somebody else is already doing? You can find anybody online and cyber-stalk them. <laughs> you can just walk in their footsteps and let them, you know, just use the science of drafting. Follow what everyone else has done, because somebody else is already doing it. So why don't you have what you want? When you have all the information that you need, you have the contacts that you need, there are probably free tools online that allow you to start a business or join a group or do whatever the heck you want. It all comes down to one word. Shut the front door, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> the F-bomb. It's everywhere. You hear it all the time, and I, I honestly don't understand what the appeal is of the word. I mean, you don't sound smart when you say it. And it's really not expressing how you really feel. It's sort of a cheap, you know, shot to take. And of course, you know, I'm talking about the word fine. <laughs> how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Oh, really? You are? Dragging around those extra 40 pounds, you're fine. Feeling like roommates with your spouse, and you're fine. You haven't had sex in four months, you're fine. Really? I don't think so. But see, here's the deal with saying that you're fine. It's actually genius. Because if you're fine, you don't have to do anything about it. But when you think about this word fine, it just makes me so angry. I mean, here we are at a conference about being alive and you're gonna describe the experience of being alive as fine? What a flimsy and feeble word. If you're crappy, say you're crappy. If you're amazing, say you're amazing. Tell the truth. And this not only goes for the social construct, oh, I don't wanna burden you with the fact that I hate my life, or, you know, hey, I'm amazing, but that would make you feel terrible. <laughs> the bigger issue, the bigger issue with fine is that you say it to yourself. That thing that you want, I guarantee you, you've convinced yourself that you're fine not having it. That's why you're not pushing yourself. It's the areas in your life where you've given up, where you've said, oh, I'm fine. I, I, my mom's never going to change, so I just can't have that conversation. I'm fine. You know, we've got to wait until the kids graduate before we get divorced, so we'll just sleep in separate bedrooms. I'm fine, I lost my job, I can barely pay my bills, but whatever, it's hard to get a job. And you know, one of the reasons why this word also just annoys me so much is scientists have calculated, oh yeah, I'm coming down. <laughs> scientists have calculated the odds of you being born. That's right. They've crunched the numbers. I see you up there. <laughs> they have crunched the numbers on you. Yeah, no, you guys standing up, you want to sit down for this. <laughs> They've crunched the numbers on you being born. And they took into account all of the wars and the natural disasters and the dinosaurs and everything else. 
And do you realize that the odds, the odds of you, yeah, right here, put your computer away, stand up for me, Doug. <laughs> so the odds of Doug here, turn around, say hi to everybody. The odds, oh. yeah, of Doug, Doug being born at the moment in time he was born to the parents you were born to with the DNA structure that you have, a hundred, or no, one and four hundred trillion. Isn't that amazing? I'm so lucky. Yes. <laughs> you're not fine, you're fantastic. You have life-changing ideas for a reason, and it's not to torture yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And you know, Christine was right when she said all of you could be on stage, because all of you, we're all in this category. One and four hundred trillion. All day long you have ideas that could change your life, that could change the world, that could change the way that you feel, and what do you do with them? Nothing. Oh, hopefully I won't moon you. <laughs> you didn't pay for that. You must come up with a morning routine that you do every single morning, or at least more mornings than not, that puts you in control of yourself and in control of your day. This is what I do, and I cannot explain the power that I get from starting my day off and being bigger than my excuses and being in control. First and foremost, wake up on time. When that alarm goes off, get your butt out of bed. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Why is that important for persistence? The reason why is because the first decision that you're making of the day is to actually get up and get moving. That means you are persistently bigger than your excuses. You are persistently bigger than feeling lazy. And you are persistently beating the feelings that typically stop you. The second thing that I want you to do, before you look at your email, before you answer your phone, before you start surfing Vox and Vice and BuzzFeed and you know TeamStream and checking out the sales on Zappos and looking at your Facebook newsfeed, before you pick up the damn phone, please, please, please figure out your two priorities for the day. These are the things that matter to you. Whether it's saving money and, and making sure you're focused on that, or showing up at work and being a contributor, or whether it's changing how you treat your spouse or your kids or the person that you're with, or heck, getting to the gym because you said you would. Whatever it is that your two priorities are, put them in your head before you pick up the phone. Why? The reason why is because of persistence. The reason why is because I want you to have a good day. Do you know what makes for a bad day? What makes for a bad day is snoozing, starting your day off late, starting your day off tired, starting your day off by mainlining everybody else's news feed on social media and looking at everybody else's life and, and saying to yourself, oh my God, they're on vacation, or gosh, they look so great, or their friends are so fancy, or my gosh, they've got so money. You start off your day looking at that shit, you're never gonna have a good day. You gotta start off your day by getting up on time, figuring out your priorities, and then getting to work on them. Do not pick up your phone until you have done those two things. I think the single biggest reason why people have bad days is because they start them off by looking around at everybody else and seeing what they're doing instead of having the focus and the discipline to actually start your day off with you in control and with your priorities front and center. So, you want a bonus round? Exercise every day. That's right, get up on time, figure out your priorities, and exercise. You do those three things, you'll be kicking ass every single day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to know what did you take from this video? What are you going to immediately apply somehow to your life or to your business? Please leave your thoughts down in the comments below. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. I also want to give a quick shout out to Surge Wisdom. Thank you so much for picking up a copy of my book, Your One Word, and making those awesome YouTube videos on it as well. I really, really appreciate the support and I'm so glad you enjoyed the read.
So thank you guys so much for watching. I believe in you. I hope you continue to believe in yourself and whatever your one word is. Much love, guys. I'll see you soon. So let me give you the one word secret to happiness. One word. This is all you need to be happy. The most important word ever. If you had to think of one word that's most important to you or that sums you up or that would be kind of like a little beacon. Hey, Believe Nation, if you want to know what the most important one word is for Tony Robbins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Oprah Winfrey, Will I Am, and Howard Schultz, I have a very special secret video for you. Check the description for details.